We're going to use disks or washers now to find the volume of this object. If we start with the region bounded by y equals x and y equals x squared, which we've drawn right here, and we revolve that around the y-axis, like this, what we end up with is something like a bowl with a rounded outer edge and a conical inner shape. So it's a little hard to visualize at first, but from the outside you would just see this rounded bowl, and if you looked inside, that's when you would see the cone cut out from the middle. If we slice this thing, it should be clear at first that we're going to end up with washers because there's a hollow space in the middle. And so we're focusing more on examples with washers than with disks because if you can do the washer problems, you can definitely do the disk problems. The other thing to notice with this one is that since it's revolved around a vertical line, when we slice it, we're going to slice it across that line and our thicknesses will be delta y as we have these horizontal slices. So everything will be done in terms of y. That's the other thing to notice. So a slice in general will look like a washer, more or less like this, with a thickness of delta y. And then we'll have an inner radius here and an outer radius to the outer edge. So once you recognize that, it just becomes a problem of figuring out those values for the radius, because then the area function will be pi capital R squared minus pi little r squared, and then the volume will be the integral of that. Now to do this, recognize that this outer edge is y equals x squared, and the inner edge is y equals x. But just like we saw with areas, recognizing that our integral is going to be in terms of y because of that thickness delta y which turns into dy, that means we need to rewrite these functions as x equals a function of y. So the straight line is easier because y equals x is the same as x equals y. With the other one, we need to solve for x by taking the square root of both sides, and we get x equals the square root of y. We did this back when we were working on areas between functions, and I'll, again, I'll remind you that when you have y equals x squared, technically x equals the positive and negative square root of y, but the negative one is this side over here, which we don't really need to worry about because we just need to pick one or the other. If you want to think more about that, you can think about the fact that when we calculate the radius, we're going to end up squaring it. So whether we use the positive one to describe the radius or the negative one, the answer works out the same for volume as it should. So there's no real problem. So the center line here is the y-axis, which is the line x equals zero. The inner edge is described by the line x equals y, and then the outer edge is described by the parabola x equals the square root of y, which means that our inner radius is just y minus 0, and our outer radius is just the square root of y minus 0. And I'll pause here and mention that, just like in the last example, if we revolved around a different vertical line, like say we revolved around x equals negative 3. In that case, this would be negative 3, and then the inner radius would be y minus negative 3, or y plus 3, and the outer radius would be y minus negative 3 as well, or the square root of y plus 3. So don't get thrown off too much by the fact that we're keeping things simple and using an axis, one of the coordinate axes, as our center of rotation. If we change that, it doesn't change much about the problem. We just need to account for that when we subtract to find the radius. So keep that in mind, and when you run across homework questions like that, you can make that small change. It doesn't change much. When you go to square the radius, there is a little bit more 
algebra you need to do to expand them out, but other than that, it doesn't affect too much of the problem. So this means that our area function is a function of y, and it's the pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared. So that would be pi times the square root of y squared minus pi times y squared. Or to simplify, we can factor out a pi and write this as y minus y squared. Which means when we go to find the volume, we just need to integrate pulling the pi out in front. We're looking for the integral of y minus y squared. The last thing we need is the limits of integration, meaning the y values at the bottom and the top of this figure. The bottom is easy because these two intersect when y equals zero. And the top also isn't too hard. We just have to figure out the y value when y equals x and y equals x squared intersect, which you can do by setting them equal to each other and solving. But we've already done this and we found that it was equal to one. So I'll skip the work to find that. But in general, you would set the two functions equal and solve the equation that results. So all the hard work is done. There's our volume. We just need to calculate the integral. Everything else is completed. So like with most application problems, the hard part is setting up the integral. Actually calculating it is pretty straightforward. So in this case, y becomes 1 half y squared y squared becomes one-third y cubed. And then we can plug in the limits of integration. And the answer is pi over six. Again, I skipped over the details of plugging in the limits of integration, but I trust by this point you can follow that along fairly well. So again, just one more reminder here at the end. We revolved around the y-axis, but if we revolved around a different vertical line, all that would change is this value here and then we would have minus whatever value we need right there. So keep track of that and make sure you can follow this pattern for similar ones where you're finding the volume using washers if the washers end up being horizontal.